how can you make sure that the keywords you're focusing on are going to actually get you higher Google rankings? Well, you need to do a little bit of research up front if you want to get the benefits that SEO has to offer. And there are a lot of tools out there that are going to help you do it, some free but limited, um, some paid, but those can be really expensive. And unless you're an SEO expert, it can be really intimidating to use some of those. But I have today the ultimate tool for you when it comes to researching those keywords. It's not only incredibly powerful and easy to use, but it's actually free too. And it is really easy, but I'm going to show you exactly what to do to find your most profitable keywords for your business. So I did a video last year about my then favorite free keyword tool, it was called KW Finder. But guess what? It's not free anymore and I get comments about it all the time. So, But even then, it did limit you to just a few searches per day. So I wanted to do an update video and I found something that I like just as much and it's 100% free without limits and it's called Uber Suggest. And the reason it works so well is that it's designed to work through Google's Suggest feature using the same algorithms that Google itself uses to suggest keywords. So the way it's designed makes this really powerful tool incredibly easy for even the biggest SEO newbies to master in just minutes. So let's head into the computer. Okay, so here we are at Ubersuggest, and you're just going to go to neilpatel.com slash Ubersuggest to get there. And the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to type in the main keyword phrase that you think you want to be found for and also your um, your language and country. And I'm just going to click on search to get us started. And you'll notice the first thing it's asking you to do is to register for free and sign or sign in. So uh, it is absolutely free. You don't have to put in any credit card information. I highly recommend you do this because it's going to give you way more suggestions. Um, and it's just you can just sign in with Google. It doesn't take more than a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in myself. So now it's going to ask you if you have a website you want to track. I'm not going to do that. We're just doing keyword research. So I'm just going to click on the X up here and then go over to overview. All right, cool. So I've typed in dog boarding NYC just to get us started. Right off the bat, it tells us we have a search volume of around 1,000 searches a month, which is pretty good. Uh, SEO difficulty of 28. It's still marked as easy, so that's a good thing too. And cost per click, 560. That's not going to be important if you're doing uh, re keyword research for organic listings, but I always like to look at the cost per click because if it's too low, that generally tells me that no one's really um, either looking for that phrase or there's no buyer intent behind that phrase. Keep in mind, whenever a cost per click is really high, um, while that's not ideal on the surface of it, it does tell you that it's high for a reason, that it's actually generating income for the companies that pay for that placement. So it's just a good thing to kind of have in the back of your mind. So let's go on down here. So here's where I really want you to pay attention to. Here we've got the keyword ideas. So again, what you input is just what you thought you wanted to be found for, but they may come back with other ideas that are going to be more beneficial for you. So uh, I'm just going to click on view all keyword ideas. So what we've got here, we've got two panes right here on the left and the right. So on the left, we have all the keyword ideas, all the suggestions that are going to give us. And on the right, we have uh, what Google is currently showing in these positions for uh, dog boarding NYC. So I notice if you were to, uh, let's just say dog boarding Queens, New York, and let's click on the, the arrow there, it's going to redo these results um, in terms of what would show up for that query instead. So but I'm just going to go back to... Uh, dog boarding NYC. I'm just going to click that one. Okay, so here are the, the, the things I really want you to pay close attention to. The search volume, you know, how many people every month are searching for that phrase in, you know, the United States. And unfortunately, one thing that's missing from this that I really would like to see is the ability to um, have it show you results from any given spot within the country. Like, it'd be great if we could just see dog boarding uh, results in the New York area, right? But that's not available to us here. We got to work with what we've got. And this is a really robust free tool other than that. So we've got search volume. And I generally like to see something between 500 and 5,000. That's kind of the sweet spot. But don't discount anything if it's got over 100 uh, searches per month. But once you start getting down into 20, um, 
you know, these might not be super worth going after at that point. Cost per click, we explain that. That's how much uh, the average cost is when it's a Google ad. Again, keeping in mind, the higher it is, that denotes the more buyer intent. So if it's really super low, like 113, um, it may not come with a lot of upside once you get it. So, um, and then paid difficulty, that's how difficult it is for a paid ad. We're not gonna pay attention to that. Uh, but SEO difficulty, this is really important. This is the number that tells us how difficult it's gonna be to compete for that phrase. And these are all in the green, which is good. It's color coded, so if it goes into orange or red, that's when you know it's either medium difficulty or extreme difficulty. So what we ideally wanna do here is for every, maybe you've got one set of keyword phrases for your website if you basically offer one overall service or product, or maybe you offer several and you've got landing pages for each and you want each landing page to be able to rank for that service. So in this case, we're just going to uh, go under the assumption that we've got a homepage. All we do is dog boarding, that's all there is. So we wanna find one primary phrase which is what we're really going to put most of our effort behind. And then you can have uh, you know three to five secondary phrases to put in there as well to get some of the extra traffic. So um, we've got two at a thousand uh, volume per month and they're very similar. We have dog boarding in NYC and dog boarding NYC. But before we really choose here, I should we should go through other things. So we've got um, related words, We've got questions, so you know that basically uh, figures out what questions people are asking related to the topic. Prepositions, meaning it's going to add different words to it, and then comparison type uh, questions. So things like prices, like these are things or rates. These are things that people are using to compare. So and then let's so let's go back to the normal suggestions and let's just do a little test here. So I have NYC, but what if we have what if we do Manhattan instead? Let's just see what that comes up with. Okay, so that's quite a bit less. And then let's just say um, New York City, for instance. We just wanna make sure we're finding the right kind of keyword. So again, we've got uh, about 1,000 a month. So, and it's difficulty of 20. So let's go back to NYC. We'll just kind of keep this in mind as we go back. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, these being equal, dogboarding NYC, dogboarding in NYC, and dogboarding in New York are all relatively similar. So it's up to you. You can choose dogboarding in New York or dogboarding in NYC, but I'm going to go with dogboarding in NYC because we've got an equal search volume, but the, the SEO difficulty is a good eight points less for that. So meaning more people are going for dogboarding NYC than that. So I'm gonna choose that one as my primary. Then I'll choose pet boarding in NYC, um, best dog boarding in NYC, and best dog boarding NYC, as well as I'll choose this one too, and I'll choose all of these. And then what you can do is you can export it to a spreadsheet, or you can just copy it to a clipboard so you have it for easy reference later. But now let's do a different search. Let's try something new. So I'm gonna type in Tulsa wedding photographer and see what we got. Okay, so the top one that comes up is, is the one we typed in uh, with the search volume. By the way, you can reorder these if you want, um, but it's already the, the top one. So Tulsa Wedding Photographer comes in at number one with 260 a month, which isn't bad. Um, you know, with if you're a wedding photographer, you probably don't have to do the same kind of volume that a dog boarding place does, right? So even if you got one client every weekend, you could certainly get that from 260 uh, searches per month. And the difficulty score isn't that bad either. And I should mention too, so these are all the, the results that pop up. So what you wanna do is kind of check a few things out, right? So um, what this is telling us is the, the number one, two, three spots are, these are basically big websites with pretty high uh, domain scores. So this, there's, it's based on a lot of factors, but it's basically showing that these are really strong websites. Obviously you've heard of, well maybe you haven't if you're not, I've done a lot of work with wedding related companies, so I'm familiar with The Knot and Wedding Wire. Less so, less so with expertise.com, but point being these are big websites that you might have a hard time uh, beating, but you certainly could with enough effort. And then here we go, we've got, um, 
in the number four spot, this just looks like someone local, uh, their local website. So you can basically see how many estimated visits you can expect to get in any of these given positions. And it shows you how many links they have to these pages, uh, what their domain score is, and the social shares. So sometimes it um, looks like this guy might be doing really well based on the number of links he's got, as well as uh, the number of social shares helps as well. Okay, so I wanna try something new here. So I wanna, let, let's say that you are an accountant and you're, you offer many different services and you can specify for many different industries, but you want to prioritize which pages should you really make uh, for different industries based on the search volume. So let's just type in, I'm gonna type in accounting services for, and I'm gonna leave it blank and I'm gonna click on search. Okay, so what we've got here is accounting services for small business with 1300 searches. So maybe it would make sense to make a page uh, dedicated to that. Uh, let's see, we've got accounting services for restaurants, 170, quite a few, quite a bit drop off uh, from small business to restaurants, but it still might be worth going after, especially since it's got a really high cost per click, right? Like a lot of people are paying big money to rank for that. So that tells me there's probably some money in it on the other side. And the, uh, the SEO difficulty is still in the green at 31. So it might be worth going after as well. And then you've got accounting services for nonprofits, which still has a pretty high uh, cost per click. Not so much uh, search volume, but you know, it might be doable as well. So again, you just wanna grab the ones that look good to you. So I'm gonna get small business, restaurants, and nonprofits. You're gonna export it to a spreadsheet or just copy it to your clipboard. So once you have all those money keywords for your website, what do you do with them? Well, I've got a whole video showing you what you can focus on in just about five minutes a day to apply these keywords across your site in a way that's gonna get you the best results. So click this video right here and I'll see you there.